Now the Norwegian version. <clears throat> yeah, a great big chunk of granite rose from out the sea one day. Its coastal shore indented deep with fjords along the way. And when the angels saw it, ufta, it looked so stark and bare. They said, we'll have to fix it, or the trolls just won't live there. So they sprinkled it with waterfalls to drain the glacier's flow. Their awesome grandeurs now unmatched, no matter where you go. Then they nourished it with lutefisk and the warm wefts up from a tray. And when they had it finished, yeah, they called it Old Norway. That's a leprechaun that I see here. Just the sort of individual that I was hoping to talk to. Good dog, good dog. I'm Torvald, a troll from the Hall of the Mountain Kings. Blimey, a troll, you say? Well, welcome to the Emerald Isle. What brings you here, my lad? Well, you might call it a little bit of a heritage tour. Yes, I suppose you've heard of the Vikings? Viking Shun and the Gar. I've heard of those bearded invaders in long ships. They were here once, but we drove them out, you know. Oh, Akurat, Akurat. But not before they've been around for quite a while. For example, Limerick. You've all heard of Limerick. On the Shannon River in Ireland? Well, it was a Norwegian city originally. Ah, yes, a Limerick, and I have a Limerick for you. There once was a visiting troll. Oh. whose smile was truly quite droll. As he sipped from his jug of Jim Beam, his eyes, they started to gleam. And then what do you think? He fell in the drink. And that's how we got Irish cream. Oh. <laughs> oh, you really know how to make a visitor feel welcome. I can't imagine why any self-respecting troll, though, would drink Jim Beam anyhow when Akavit is so much better, don't you know? <laughs> In any case, there's lots of evidence of Viking settlements throughout the British Isles, and I'd like to see some of it. For instance, some of those ancient watchtowers that have survived for centuries. Those Vikings first came as far back as 800 AD. Did you know also that Dublin was an old Norse name? It was founded by the Vikings in 841. Oh, I can't say I've heard that one before. As for me, I pay more attention to when the Vikings left oh. than when they came. Oh. Ever hear of a bottle of Clontarf? Uh, that, that one I think I learned in history class. Yeah, sure. It was, uh, it was 1014, I believe, and uh, the leader was um, uh, uh, Boris or... Uh, or Berwin or something? 999. Brian of Boruma. That was on Good Friday, April 23rd, 1014. You Norsemen lost 7,000 men that day. Uh, now I call that a rope. Oh, uh, sure, sure. Are you telling the truth? I mean, that is the Blarney Stone here that you're sitting on. Huh? Those Vikings were tough to beat, though. You have to admit that. Yeah, I that. But have you ever heard of the fighting Irish? Well, I guess we lost on any permanent possession of Ireland on that one, but we still left our mark. Vikings were there in many Irish cities for years after that, conducting seafaring expeditions <laughs> to trade goods with other countries than with the Irish citizens. And don't forget, it was the Vikings who found Vinland, and a lot of Irish wound up there, you know. I had. Uh... And a fair number from your country showed up as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ireland and Norway both contributing large numbers of their folk to the United States. Everybody knows that. So we have that in common, too. No other European country has sent as large a portion of their total population as Ireland. From 1840 to 1900, 
about four and a half million of us Paddies and Patsies went over on, on over to the United States. Oh, sure, yeah, that's potato famine, you know, it started it all, didn't it? But Norway ranks right up there too, you know. We're second in line after the Irish when counting the countries who sent the biggest percentage of their population to the United States. Our first ship was in 1825. Now, a lot of both Irish and Norsemen have come to America and brought along their folkways, we leprechauns and new trolls, and many special holidays, like sitting in the and St. Patrick's Day. Say, do you think any trolls will be at the St. Patrick's Day parade in New York, March 17th? St. Pat, you know, he brought Christianity to Ireland in 400, way before the Vikings came along. He also brought Latin and the art of writing. Oh, sure, sure. I can't say much, though, about those trolls. For sure, the Viking spirit will be on hand, though. And I bet that lots of the Norwegian Americans will be eating Irish stew that day, too. I've heard tell that you can find them in the basement of some of the Catholic churches on St. Paddy's Day in certain parts of the United States. Well, let me share a little verse with you. I lay no claim to Irish blood. My ancestry is Viking. But when it comes to Irish stew, well, it's strictly to my liking. Sure, Paddy, we Scandinavians, St. Patrick's Day are seen. Everyone stew to celebrate and the wearing of the green. Erin <laughs> Dobra! Well, did you hear that the Norse influence in what you just said, Erin Dobra? It's spelled differently to be sure, but that slogan Ireland forever, Erin Gobra has words of a very Norwegian nature. Gobra, you know, means to go well, as in to go well with you. Hanabra, that's Norwegian, not Irish. May it go well with the Irish, though. Well, I do thank you, kind sir. For a tourist, you've been most informative. That tall of yours. The one belonging to the Mountain Kings. Is, is that in Norway, right? Let me read you this now about the Irish Americans. Paddy and the Lady Liberty. I last, the Indians owned this isle. They now call Liberty. Then Bacora, twas the Brits grabbed it. A taken oysters from the sea. A wee bit more and the U.S. Army built some barracks called Fort Wood. And then later, was a lighthouse, once the lady came for good. Nearby, upon Ellis Island, new arrivals by the score took heart at the lady's offer about a lamp and a golden door. Sure, she was built in France last, for copper from Norway came. So I suppose you'd be wondering how we Irish they are claimed. I sure that she's American my sweet Bonnie Colleen. But don't you ever forget, lass, she's wearing the green. <laughs> <laughs> well, tak skal du ha for that, tak skal du ha. Those were some very fine words, sir. I couldn't agree with you more. Well, I must be going now. You say if I turn left down there at the fork in the road that I'll come to one of those Viking watchtowers? Aye, straight ahead, then turn to the left. You may visit <laughs> May your visit to Ireland be a fine one. So far, so fine. But as the Vikings used to say, judge no day until evening, no wife until buried, and no drink until drunk. Hadabra, hadabra. The Lord of Gobra. And here's a special blessing for the likes of you. May the winds of fortune speed you. May you sail a gentle sea. May it always be the other guy that says, the drink's on me. <laughs>